Good evening. Great to be with all of you. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, I am a believer in that maxim. You've all heard that power tends to corrupt. And I believe that PowerPoint corrupts absolutely. (laughs) So if I could ask the team in the back, or am I supposed to do it, to click for my first and only slide. This is it. Do you know this guy? Were you expecting him tonight? (laughs) Yeah. Um, I didn't think so. This is not a speech about religion. It's not a speech about the Catholic Church. Generally, it's not a speech about LGBT. LGBT issues as it relates to the Catholic Church, all important topics, not my topic tonight. In fact, what I'm doing is not actually a speech. I just want to share some thoughts that I think we could all benefit from as leaders and advocates for equality and justice around the world that we could learn from this man um, and then open it up for what I hope will be a discussion. So this is Pope Francis a year ago being named uh, Person of the Year, nine months into his job only. And do you remember those things he did in the first nine months? I went back and looked, and I think you could each probably think of some. You know what's interesting is what he didn't do in those first nine months. He didn't change one major policy. Think about that. And those of us who work all day, either in our job jobs or as volunteers, to help change policy in our own countries or around the world, I think that's really important to reflect on. I am not saying that policy isn't important, right? And I I reflect on my boss, President Obama, and what he's done in the policy area as it relates to LGBT rights. And you probably know it even better than I do, but you can think of what he's done in in our military with repealing Don't Ask, Don't Tell. You can think about what he's done in our courts by having the federal government, Department of Justice, stop uh, defending Defense of Marriage Act. Um, what he has done in, the, in our health care system with granting uh, visitation rights, expanding health care coverage, our national HIV AIDS strategy, what he's done in classrooms with respect to bullying. So he's done a lot of things on the policy front. Most recently, Secretary of State John Kerry, who when he learned about, uh, he translated that Defense of Marriage Act change that we did and translated it into something right here in London where uh, he came and made an announcement right in our consular waiting room where you come and get visas, uh, that we were going to grant visas uh, for gay married couples. Made this big announcement. It was really cool. Got good press coverage. And then my favorite part, we actually granted someone a visa. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? And so it's sort of like, you know, policy and words are really good, but like, did it. Actually did it that very day. And a few feet from where he did that, There hangs a beautiful American flag that was a gift from the Kaleidoscope Trust to his predecessor, Secretary Hillary Clinton. And it was given to her in recognition of that wonderful speech she gave in Geneva, where she said five very powerful words. Gay rights are human rights. So I reflect on those things as I think about the work ahead, because we have lots of hard work. 42 of the 53 Commonwealth nations still have laws on the books relating to the LGBT community um, left over from colonial times or whatever. Hard work that you all are doing and that we need to support to repeal or at least reform those laws. Um, And so we will do that important reform policy style work. But as we do it, I want to reflect on Pope Francis because... Uh, he, you know, I said he didn't do any policies. About two months ago, he called an exceptional synod uh, of all the bishops around the world. And one of the things they were considering is more inclusive language around gay Catholics. And so he tries, and I think the language starts out like this, and maybe it's pretty strong and powerful from our perspective. Then it gets watered down, um, and then it still loses. But it doesn't pass, even in sort of watered down form. But Pope Francis says, you know what, in the spirit of transparency, I'm going to share with the world exactly how the vote went and why we failed to get the two-thirds or why they failed to get the two-thirds 
doing it, and it's 63 conservative bishops who weren't willing to put up with the, uh, even the watered-down language. So there's clearly work he still needs to do and is trying to do, and I think if he never changes any policy, he won't be satisfied. But as we do this hard policy work, I want us to reflect on all that we can do with words and symbols before policy gets changed, while policy is getting changed, after policy is getting changed. Um, and sometimes, and I'll close with this thought, sometimes, and I see this in my own life as a diplomat, that we know, I mean, you guys do this every day in your lives, we know words and symbols are important, and yet we undercut them in the words we do and the actions we take. And I'll give you an example on words. As a diplomat, I am often asked in our government talking points to say the following. We need actions, not just words. Like that, We say that all the time. Uh, I say that all the time. But because it's a catchy phrase and it's easy to say, we end up using it in a bunch of places where I don't think we need to say it. And if you think about what that actually implies, it implies that actions matter and words don't. And yet what we all know is that some actions are helpful to achieve the ends we want, and some aren't. And some words are really helpful to get what we want done, and some aren't. And the other and final example is around symbols. And I think those of us experimenting with social media, how many people are trying to be good at Twitter or Facebook or any of those things? It's a process, right? I'm, I'm struggling. <laughs> I'm struggling. And there's a tendency, and I'm guilty of it, I mean, you retweet, some, you know, someone does something clever and snarky and, and you just can kind of retweet it. And you can get in this kind of shallow um, place as it revolves symbol. And it's almost like symbolic means shallow. And it doesn't. I mean, proper symbols are the opposite of shallow. Um, and I think about, we can all think of, not, of course, from your wonderful companies, um, but you can think about those lame corporate brochures that you see where they've struggled hard to get one of every face that they want to have represent sort of their rainbow, right? And it looks good and the picture's glossy and it's great, or university prospectus, same thing. You just have to take one walk down the hallway of that company or one stroll through that campus and you will know instantly if that's real or that's fake. You know, and I think too often with social media we can get tempted to just do kind of a lot of fakery. And as I reflect on Pope Francis, and try to get inspired by his words and symbols, I am encouraged, and I think we all should be encouraged, to take risks based on authenticity and based on vulnerability and based on openness and not get sort of into these gimmicks of splash and controversy and shock that are so easy to do on social media. Because... If we follow, again, an example of using them, I think, in the way he's doing it in the right way, we will take risks that are based on talking about love and caring, showcasing love and caring, and practicing love and caring in all we do. And from everything I've seen, read, and heard about Kaleidoscope Trust, that is what you all are doing every single day. And for that, I thank you, and I'm most grateful. Thank you.